Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about structure of wheat. Now, wheat is the member of grass family Gramineae and it belongs to genus Tritica. The members of this family produce dry one seeded fruit and this type of fruit is called caryopsis but commonly it is called as kernel or grain. Wheat is the one of the most important cereal crop in the world. The wheat produced in the country belongs to triticum estivum which is around 95%, triticum durum which is about 4% and triticum dicocum which is about 1% and all these are used for bakery, pasta and traditional product. Some historic documents also confirm that wheat is the earliest field crop used for human food processing. If we talk about the structure of wheat then the length of the whole wheat grain is about 8 mm and weight is about 35 mg. In some kind of wheat the tip of each kernel is covered by stiff hairs called brush which you can e clearly see in this diagram. Along one side of the grain there is a crease which is due to enfolding of the aileron and all covering layers. This crease not only makes it difficult for the miller to separate the bran from the endosperm with a good yield but also forms a hiding place of a microorganism and dust. Wheat kernels vary widely in texture and color. The variation in texture is related to binding force in the endosperm and the color usually relate, related to pigment in the seed coat. The type and presence of the pigment is under genetic control and this can be manipulated by plant breeders to give desired color to the wheat kernels. Now this slide shows you the detailed structure or parts of a wheat kernel. So basically we can divide the wheat kernel into two main parts that is pericarp and seed. Pericarp itself having two different layers, outer pericarp and inner pericarp and we can divide the seed into three different parts, seed coat, endosperm and germ and all these layers we are going to learn in detail in the next slide. So pericarp surrounds the entire seed and is composed of several layers, the outer pericarp and inner pericarp. The outer pericarp is what Miller's calls the bee's wing. The outer pericarp consists of three layers, epidermis, hypodermis and remnants of thin walled cells. Next to the epidermis is the hypoderm of varying thickness. The innermost portion of the outer pericarp consists of the remnants of the thin walled cells. The inner pericarp is composed of three types of cells, intermediate cells, cross cells and tube cells. Neither the intermediate nor tube cells completely cover the kernel. The cross cells are long and cylindrical and have the long axis perpendicular to the long axis of the kernel. The cross cells are long and cylindrical and they are tightly packed with little or no intercellular space. The tube cells are the same journal size and shape but they are not tightly packed and have their long axis parallel to the long axis of the kernel. The total pericarp has been reported to comprises about 5% of the kernel and consists of about 6% protein, 2% ash and 20% cellulose and 0.5% fat. Next is seed coat. The seed coat is firmly joined to the tube cells on the outside and nucellar epidermis on the inside. It consists of three layers, a thick outer cuticle, a pigment layer means a layer which contains pigment and the thin inner cuticle. 
Next to the seed coat layer, there is a nucellar epidermis which is sometimes also called as hyaline layer is present and it unites to both the seed coat and the aileron layer. Next to seed coat and nucellar epidermis, there is another layer which is called as aileron layer which is one cell thick and it completely surround the kernel covering both the starfish endosperm and the germ. From a botanical standpoint, it is the outer layer of this endosperm. It is removed during milling along with the nucellar epidermis, seed coat and pericarp to form what the miller calls bran. The aileron layer cells are heavy walled, cube shaped and free of starch. The structure and composition of the aileron granules is complex. The aileron layer is relatively high in ash, protein, phosphorus, phytate, fat and niacin content. In addition, thymine and riboflavin are higher in the aileron than in the other parts of the bran and enzyme activity is also high in this layer. Now next part of a wheat kernel is a starchy endosperm. This starchy endosperm is actually made up of three types of cells, peripheral cells, prismatic and central cell. The peripheral cells are the first of the cells inside the aileron layer and are usually small. Prismatic cells are elongated cells and central cells are more irregular in size and shape. The endosperm cell walls are composed of pentosins, hemicellulose and beta glucans. The thickness of the cell walls varies with the location in the kernel. They are thicker near the aileron. The contents and cell walls of the endosperm make up wheat flour. The cells are packed with starch granules embedded in a protein matrix. The protein is mostly but not all gluten which is a storage protein of a wheat. The strength of the protein starch bond explains the kernel hardness. In soft wheat, the protein starch bond rupture easily and the kernel get crushed with minimal force. In harder wheat, the protein starch bond is progressively stronger. Next and the last part of a wheat kernel is germ which actually comprises 2.5 to 3.5 percent of the kernel. The germ is composed of two major parts, the embryonic axis and the scutellum which actually function as a storage organ. When the seed germinates, scutellum mobilizes the stored food reserves in the endosperm to embryo. The germ is relatively high in protein, sugar, oil and ash. It contains no starch but is rather high in B vitamin and also contain many enzymes. So this is all about the structure of wheat. Hope you understand about all the parts of a wheat kernel. If you like this video, please do share and subscribe and don't forget to note all the important points. Thank you.